Love seeing all those people on the broadcast, amen. So many powerful people have been on Faith with Katie, and I feel honored and privileged to have them. So welcome to today's broadcast, everybody. We're broadcasting live from our new location in Naples, Florida. Praise God. It's Christmas and snowing everywhere else, but not so here, amen. <laughs> it's beautiful and balmy outside. I love it. I love being down here, and we're grateful for Faith Television Network for broadcasting the show and allowing us to um, have this space in one of their buildings. We're very grateful. Look, if you're watching live on your on your TV right now in Africa or Europe or, or overseas where Faith reaches out to you, get also on our page, My Faith TV. Go to My Faith TV on Facebook or go to Katie Souza so you can chat in. People are chatting in right now. Look. Today is a show about the miracle of the oil. Man, the anointing oil is making a comeback. There's more oil on the oil than I've ever seen, and it's just starting to grow and expand. And today's guest, Joshua Mills, wrote a book about it, but he didn't just write the book. He's been walking out and living living for years and years, for decades, the miracle of the oil. So he's writing and talking and teaching from firsthand incredible experience, signs, wonders, and miracles, oil dripping out of his hands, out of his feet. We have the footage. That's right. Don't even believe the story. You're going to see the video. So share the broadcast, guys. Share the broadcast because everybody needs to understand the importance now of using and utilizing the oil of the anointing. Amen. So get ready for the show. But before we bring Joshua on, let's watch today's selfie miracle testimony video. Check it out. Hi, my name is Callie. And um, I saw Katie at the Twin Cities Prophetic Conference back in April. And at this meeting, she talked about um, idols and just um, how you can put things above God. And one of them was um, food. And during this meeting, God showed me, brought me back to a time back in fifth grade when I um, started to eat food to bring me comfort. It was the one thing I could control. And so during this meeting, while Katie's praying for us to get freed, I saw a picture um, of a food demon that I had been carrying around for about 20 years of my life. And um, it had been controlling my appetite. And I just, no matter what I did, I couldn't lose weight. And um, just these uncontrollable cravings for junk food. And after this meeting, um, I went home and I weighed myself and I had lost 20 pounds <laughs> um, supernaturally. And then um, a little while later, I'm pregnant now. So then I went to the doctor to get my blood drawn. And I was like pre-diabetic at the time, like before this meeting. And after the meeting, my um, levels had gone down drastically to like a safe level went from like a 5.9 to a, like a 4 and the doctors just couldn't explain it why they had dropped so much um, so it's just it's something that happened to, to me and I just thank Katie for sharing this with everybody <laughs> Amen. God is in the business of being supernatural, guys. It's true. And he can do anything and, and fulfill any need that you have. We just have to adhere ourselves to Christ and believe because nothing is impossible with God. Look, if you've ever had a miracle of any kind, you need to send us your video testimony. Get on your phone and put it in the landscape version and make a two-minute testimony about what God did for you, what happened to you, what the doctor said was wrong with you, you. What happened if it was an accident or an injury or disease? And then what happened when Jesus touched you? Amen. And then send it to selfies at katiesouza.com. That's selfies at katiesouza.com. And don't forget about Faith Now, guys. You go to faithnow.net. You sign up for $1.99. And my goodness, you're going to have so much at your hands right there. One stop shopping for revelation, for information, for worship, for church services, for deliverance, for healing, for the supernatural, for the glory. Okay, because you got Katie Souza TV on there. You got Sid Roth's It's, uh, it's Supernatural Network on there. You got Kenneth Copeland's Network. All my friends are on my TV uh, channel, except for Joshua Mills. I just realized that I'm going to have to put him on. 
Amen. So you got to get it. It's only a buck 99. Okay. Go to faithnow.net and sign up. When you do the monthly sign up, put in Katie TV. Katie TV as your discount code. That shows the powers that be, Dr. Andre and Jenny, that I'm really um, moving this great project forward for you guys to have the entertainment. One dollar of it goes towards um, the prison ministry and the rest, 99 cents, that's all it really costs for us to do this because Dr. Andre is such a great negotiator. It's faithnow.net, faithnow.net. Now, let's bring on today's special guest, a good friend of mine. I love Joshua Mills. Welcome him to, to today's broadcast. My friend, welcome. I'm telling you, you know, every time I see you or we do a, uh, an event together or we do a show together, it's like so timely what's happening in the world that you have that particular message going on. And now you're, right. you're spreading the message about something that's been in the Bible and people have talked about forever, for decades, the miracle of the, uh, the anointing oil. And yes. you're moving in this, but man, it's gaining new, fresh ground and authority there is a new oil that is being released all over the world right now i can feel it so strongly in the spirit and i know that this is what god is emphasizing for this moment because you know the bible says that in isaiah it says that the anointing destroys the yoke a bondage mm. speaking about the enlargement the increase that comes through the anointing of god and we see a lot you know we see a lot of Areas that need breakthrough right now. We see a lot of places where we need a fresh touch. We see a lot of stuff happening in society in general where it's like, could it really get any worse? And the truth is God is giving us his oil. God is giving us a fresh anointing for the breakthrough that we need. Mm, my gosh. Okay, so now let me just give you this fun little story just to, to prove how right oh, you hey. are. Okay, so I was just with Dog and Francie, Dog the Bounty Hunter, and we were traveling to an event. This was a couple weeks ago. And uh, there was a man there in the airport that had had a, a broken rib. Okay, he broke one rib and he said, he, I said, what level pain are you in? And he said, I'm in a Mach 1000 pain. Okay, Ooh. and I was like, okay, so as I went to, I asked him if I, I could pray, and as I went to pray for him, I heard the Lord say, put on him one drop of oil. <laughs> now, I don't carry oil with me, and shame on me, guys, just saying that from now on, because of what happened at the airport and because of this message that Josh was hey, carrying, yes. I'm going to start carrying oil with me. Okay, so I knew that my brother, Dog, always has a bottle of oil in his pocket. So I, I got his oil, I put one drop on his forehead and prayed for him, and he immediately went down from the, quote, 1,000 pain to a three pain and was getting better as we walked oh. away. Wow, that yeah. is amazing. <laughs> and that shows, you know, that shows the power of what God will do in his anointing. We know that the oil is prophetic. The oil is symbolic of the power, the anointing, the miracles of God himself. And um, I love that testimony because it shows that it doesn't matter how difficult the situation is, how great the pain is, how absolutely impossible the situation seems. With the anointing of God, all things are possible. With the anointing of God, we, we can expect complete turnarounds. And I'm feeling that even right now for those who are watching, Katie, that there are major turnarounds that are happening right now. Some of you, you have been in crazy pain, just like Katie was talking about, like that Mach 1000 pain. But there is an anointing for you. There is oil flowing today mm. for you from the Holy Spirit to bring complete turnaround. Miracles, miracles, miracles mm. are yours right now in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. Mm. It's Thank true, guys. Lord. It's impartable, isn't it, Joshua? I mean, seriously, people can go get 
you know, uh, olive oil from their kitchen right now during this broadcast, and we encourage you to do so. And, you know, yes. put a drop on your forehead, um, anoint your hands, lay your hands on that area that you're sick. In fact, start chatting it in right now where you're sick and go run and get some of that olive oil. And by the way, just so you know, I like my Christmas decorations of at least two weeks into the new year. So, you know, and don't even act like you don't have yours up too, okay? So, you know, They're next beautiful. week... <laughs> They'll be gone, but enjoy them while you can. Yeah, let's, let's as the people run to get their oil, let's build their faith with more teaching yes. and expounding on this because, honestly, I'll be honest with you, Joshua, I've been flaky in this area. I've hardly ever anointed people with oil. And, I've, oh, and wow. you, know the, you know the miracles I've seen. I've seen amazing miracles. I'm amazing. believing as I, as I walk around with oil and begin to utilize the truth of what you're going to teach right now, that I'm going to see double, triple yeah. what I've already seen. Amen. That's awesome. Well, you know, the, the oil is a point of contact, right? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes God will give us a point of contact because it helps enlarge our faith. And for example, like in Exodus chapter 30, and I talk about this in my book, Miracle the Oil, and I encourage everybody to go get it. Um, but in Exodus chapter 30, God gives a divine recipe to Moses very specifically. And he says, these are the ingredients, the five ingredients that are required for this anointing oil. But what God was really doing was God was teaching Moses the qualities of his anointing. And so like, for example, one of the first ingredients in the anointing oil is myrrh. And when you begin to study that out, what myrrh is, um, you begin to realize it's an extremely expensive um, item. It's an, I mean, that element back in biblical times was much more costly than gold. Mm. Um, myrrh was not a common element for people to have, but they would gather it throughout their lifetime because it's an embalming element. Yes. And so it would be used for the burial process at the end of life. And because it was so expensive, people would have to collect it throughout a lifetime. Yeah, now, this wow. is why it's so amazing that one of the gifts that Jesus was given from the wise men yeah. was the gift of myrrh, because, you know, that was not a baby shower gift. You wouldn't bring a baby <laughs> the gift of myrrh because myrrh speaks about the end of life. It talks about burial. Mm. And so when we consider that in regards to the anointing, we begin to recognize that if we want to allow God's anointing to flow through us completely, we're going to have to allow God to work that process in us that brings death to self. In Ooh. other words, death to self our own self ambitions, wow. our own self motives, our own personal desires. And we have to give ourselves to the spirit in such a degree where we say, God, it's no longer I that lives, but it's you. I give you permission to live in and through me. And that's, that's one of the qualities of the anointing is that wow. when we begin to allow the anointing to flow, it's the life of God that right. begins to flow through us. And that is so powerful. Wow. Um, there's other ingredients like, you know, the cinnamon, for example. Um, I love considering the ingredient of the cinnamon because if you've seen it, Katie, it is the cinnamon is literally like the bark of the cinnamon tree, right? Yeah. And when it's taken off and it's removed, it, it, it rolls up into these little tiny, um, it almost looks like a scroll. Yeah. And in many ways, that's symbolic of wow. the Torah or the word of God. And the fact that that cinnamon is in the anointing oil recipe represents God's word and spirit coming together. Wow. And that's another dimension. That's another aspect of the anointing is yeah. that, you know, in the, when we allow the anointing to flow, we're allowing the word of God to become manifest. We're allowing the word of God to begin to flesh out among us and be seen the power of God coming to be seen in our current day situation. Anyway, they're all, you know, there's five ingredients in the anointing oil recipe and each one of them is prophetic. And I talk about it in the book, but at the end of the day, this is why God was speaking this to Moses because he was trying to give him a revelation. Mm. And so like you're saying, you know, encouraging people to go get, you know, your, your bottle of anointing, go get the oil. God wants to give you a touch point where you can believe him and have faith to believe wow. the miracles 
in ways that you haven't believed before, where God begins to speak to you afresh, where God begins to download revelation to you that mm -hmm. enables you to move or activate something in the realm of the spirit that you've not seen before. And I do believe that this is where we are right now in the body of Christ. We're coming into a season where God wants us to see extraordinary crazy in the natural to our mind kind yeah. of miracles wow. and demonstrations of the spirit things that in the past we might say god could never Ooh. do that that yeah. could never happen Ooh. we are going to begin to see those things in these days because we need the supernatural in order to survive. And God is not just looking for people who will survive, but God's looking for a body that will begin to thrive in these challenging times. Yes. Oh God's my gosh. given us what we need. He's given us his oil. Oh my gosh. Guys, and it's true. These oils are technologies. They're the Holy Spirit. They yes. represent the Holy Spirit and they're technologies. And as Joshua was saying about the myrrh, the myrrh was used for the embalming process. Okay. You know, and, and let me just tell you a story about that. Th this myrrh oil will actually stave off death and corruption off of a body. <laughs> they would anoint the body with myrrh so that it wouldn't start rotting. Now, just as, this is the funnest story, Joshua. I was with Joan Hunter and we were ending a conference and a woman called her and said, my husband died, we live on the East Coast, we have anointed him with myrrh oil and all the oils and we put him in a sleeping bag and we're driving him all the way across the country for you guys to pray for him. So oh, they did wow. that. They showed up in a parking lot at midnight. After the meeting, we all went out there to meet him and to meet them to pray for him. Now, wow. when she opened up the sleeping bag, this man had been in that sleeping bag for five, six days. He was perfect. His limbs, he didn't have any rigor mortis. He didn't wow. have any rot, no smell. His face, his hair was shining. His face was shining. I, I could have sworn to God that he was asleep. Now, wow. unfortunately, he didn't resurrect that night. Now, I don't know I don't know why. I can't answer that question. But it showed the power of the technology of the oil, especially when you put faith on it. Yes. That it preserved his body. He was he looked youthful, young. He didn't look sick. His skin was shining. It was it was amazing. Wow. It was incredible. So, I, I love it. Go ahead. I think it's Psalm 92 speaks about um, fine oils have been poured upon me. David is speaking. He's singing. He says, fine oils have been poured upon me. And then it goes on and it speaks about the people of God. And it says, you will stay fresh and green. Yes. In other words, you will always be youthful. You will always be uh, energized by the, the power of the anointing. You will stay in that state of always having uh, strength and vitality. And I really believe that this anointing that God is releasing for the body is one that comes with supernatural youthfulness, comes with supernatural re-energization, comes mm. with supernatural. Um, it's like the ageless realm is being imparted to us through the anointing of God. So I love that story that you shared, Katie. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at Psalm 92 right now, guys, and it says, uh, verse 10, my horn, which is where they would keep the oil. They would keep it in a horn and pour yes. it out to anoint, right? The emblem, my horn, the emblem of excessive strength and straightly and stately grace you have exalted like that of a wild ox. Wild ox were powerful animals. And it says, I am anointed with fresh oil. And then like Joshua says, it goes on to say, you're going to flourish like a palm tree, be long lived, be upright, be useful, be fruitful. You're going to be like the cedar, stable, durable, incorruptible. That's what happens when you start anointing yourself with oil. You know, Joshua, we went to, and we took the uh, Deuteronomy 30 or the Exodus 30, the anointing oil recipe, and we made oil out of it. And we have been anointing our bodies with it from head to toe yes. for like a couple of years now. Have you been doing the same? What are you doing with that? I have, so there's times that the Lord has literally led us. I mean, spoken to both me and my wife, Janet, about going and making this biblical recipe, going and getting the physical elements that are needed and putting it together and using it for specific purposes. Mm. And I think, Katie, you know, the key in all of this is always being led by the spirit. And yeah. so when God begins to speak, just simply obey. There, there's no like 
formula or a pattern that we should just always do at all times and all yeah. places. It's be, it's all about relationship and just having our heart open to the heart of the spirit and being led by him. And when we've listened to what he's spoken, yeah. we have received divine results. Yeah. Now, what's so amazing about this whole oil message is, you know, back in the late nineties, when I was a worship leader down in a place called Spring Hill, Florida, uh, we were seeking God and we were just going after God and saying, God, we want you. We want the new. And we didn't even know exactly what that would look like. Uh, I mean, what our prayers, how they'd be demonstrated. But we're saying, yeah. God, we want the new and we want you. And God gave us three signs. The first sign was the heavenly fragrance begin to come in the midst of our worship services. Wow. The second sign was that the oil of the Holy Spirit yeah. begin to come on our hands, on our physical bodies, um, in a very tangible way. And when I say that, um, I remember having three frontline worship singers, they got it fl oil flowing from their foreheads, oil flowing from their hands, oil wow. flowing from the bottom of their feet. I mean, it was really powerful. The pastor who was our senior pastor in that church, he had oil. One time there was oil that overflowed from his hands. And, uh, you know, that's like Psalm 23, verse five, where oh. David says, you've anointed my head with fresh oil. My cup overflows. Yes. Talking about the overflowing physical manifestation, demonstration of oil. Oh my God. And uh, this happened for the pastor. And he heard the voice of the spirit speak to him to call forward all the people who were sick in the congregation. And he had them line up from one side of the altar to the other. And he laid his oil flowing hands on them. Wow. And as soon as he got to the end of the line, the oil stopped. So that was there for a purpose. It was there for a reason. And every single person in that line testified of being healed of their right. ailment, their sickness, the disease, you know, whatever mm -hmm. they had come forward with. And it was really like, for us, this was extremely revelatory because I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I'd never seen anything like that before. Mm. Um, I was a worship leader in that church. I was in charge of the worship teams. And as I was playing the piano, oil would begin to come in my hands, but it, it wasn't overflowing. It would just come in the creases of my palms. I mean, it was flowing enough for me to see it, but it was just in the creases. And I remember when it came like that, just the feeling of like, awe and wonder no. and the holiness of God. No. And I so appreciated what the Lord was doing. And I remember after the first time it happened, I showed some of the worship team members my the palms of my hands. Yeah. And I remember the one lady saying, Joshua, that just sweat in your hand. Oh. And I said, no, it's not. I mean, I guess some people sweat real profusely in their hands. I never sweat in my hands. Yeah. I knew it wasn't sweat. I knew it was the Lord. And um, I just cherished it and I thanked God for it. And it, every once in a while, the oil would come for me in that way. Well, wow. I was several years later, I was up in Rockford, Illinois, doing meetings. And in the middle of the night, I had a dream. And in this dream, I saw an angel anointing my forehead, anointing my hands, anointing my feet. I mean, pouring out this oil all over me. And I woke up suddenly from that, what I thought was a dream at the time. Now I realize it was an encounter. Yeah. But when I woke up, I physically had oil flowing from my body. I mean, flowing wow, from my yeah, hands. Wow, flowing from yeah. my feet. And the spirit of God spoke to my spirit in that moment and said, Joshua, I am anointing you with fresh oil. When the oil flows, anoint my people for my purposes and I will do great things. Now, the oil was not just a little bit in the palms of my hands. I mean, it was flowing, Katie. It was flowing so profusely that the bed in which I had been sleeping was oil soaked. I mean, I got up and the oil was flowing. I began moving into praying in the spirit. I was worshiping in the spirit. And at the same time, I was looking for some kind of container in the hotel that I could let this <laughs> oil flow into because there was so much oil flowing. Wow. And uh, I couldn't find a cup, I couldn't find a mug, I couldn't find an ice bucket, nothing oh my in gosh. the whole hotel room. And this is the middle of the night. And so I ended up, I, this particular hotel room had those old fashioned uh, stoppers for the sink, yeah. you know, like the rubber stoppers. Yeah. And I put the rubber stopper in the sink and I just put my hands on the, the side of the sink. and. I, 
I just continued to worship the Lord and the oil continued to flow from my hands and it filled up that sink. I mean, that's my God. crazy to think about. Okay. But I right. saw it. That right. happened. I mean, oh it's real. And the anointing that God is wanting to bring to us is an overflowing anointing. It yeah, is. Right. Amen. And sometimes we have in our head, like, if I could just get enough anointing to just make it or just get by, God's wanting to break out in your life in such exponential ways. He's yes. wanting to increase and overflow Thank in all God. of our lives. Now look guys, you might think, yeah, right. Oil was flowing so much it soaked his bed. <laughs> Oil was flowing so much it fell, it fell up the sink. Well, there is a, an event that Joshua did with Patricia King where a similar experience that he just described happened and they had their, they rushed their media team out and they caught the oil flowing. We're going to look at that video right now. You're going to be shocked and amazed awesome. at the goodness of God. Let's check it out. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Look at that, Lord. Oh my gosh. Lord, it's beautiful. It's awesome. Thank you. Lord. <laughs> What? I was surprised tonight because it's never come blue. Never come blue. No, before. there's like it came solid blue tonight, and then it started get, the get silver started popping out of it because there's light. silver also. In here. Back out of the light shirt a bit, and then it'll, there now oh. you can get a really good oh, shot. Okay. Oh, he's getting good ones. Wow. Oh see. yeah. Oh my goodness. This is just amazing. Yeah. Dump, dump a little bit more. Mm. I want a good douse. Look at that. Oh, I, I want some we, too. I wonder if we got some tape. So do you want to come stay at our house tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last time you left gold in the bed for months yeah. and never even watched All of our couch. Yeah. Well, he's getting messed up. Because yeah. I'm right on. <laughs> well, then the next morning after that evening, we um, we went into the meeting. My husband goes to pick up. Joshua in his hotel room to bring him down and there's Joshua like this with his hands are just dripping oil it's coming out all over the place and he's trying to pour it in from one to another and my husband says well let me get you you know a cup for it and then he, he, he got rid of it but then it just kept coming it just was coming out all over his hands and they kept putting it in this cup and actually two cups uh, which is interesting because in Zechariah it talks about the oil coming out of those two two tubes and, and the pipes and and so here was all this oil it just kept pouring out of him so my husband put it all in one glass and then we they they went down into the meeting and it's still pouring out all over the place and so he had this like it was about like a third of a cup of oil that had poured off of his his, his hands and was still it was still thick on his hands pouring out in the meeting and um, when we smelt the oil though, what was so cool is it had like this wine smell in it. So it was like oil and wine. And, and I thought, this is amazing. So in that service, we all got anointed with it and all kinds of stuff. But these are heavenly signs. It's like heaven to earth. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth. As it Amen. Uh, you know, I forgot to pre prelude that the night yeah. before the oil came, you actually had sapphire dust. The people in the room, yes. I know everybody that was in that room that night. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Hodgkins, Patricia King, her husband Ron Cocking, and other staff members that I, I know them all personally. They all witnessed you sitting there just normal with your jacket on, and all of a sudden an angel yeah. came and threw the yes. sapphire dust at you, exploded it, it embedded in your scalp. It came like an orb, actually. The yeah. orb appeared, and then the angel threw this orb at me, and it exploded all over me. It came in my scalp. It came on my jacket, on my clothing, but it also burst all the way down the entire row. Yeah. And Patricia that night was sitting on the opposite end of the front row from where I was seated. I was seated beside some other guest ministers, and all the way to the other end, I mean, Patricia even got splashed with uh, the sapphire dust that yeah. came. But God was really giving us a revelation about his throne, about the heavenly realm. Yeah. And the Bible speaks about the sapphire being at the feet of God in the heavenly dimension. And yes. so whew, there was so much that God was teaching us and growing us in. But part of that, too, Katie, were you in those meetings with us? <laughs> I was I wasn't out and back with you guys, but I was in the meeting. Okay, amazing. Uh, yeah. Part of 
what happened in those meetings is that, you know, the result of both the glory dust coming and the oil flowing, and I can't remember which way it happened exactly, but I do remember that there were people that were adamant uh, non-believers as far as, you know, they were atheists. They, they did not believe that God even existed yeah. and their hearts were turned in those meetings and they get, they made decisions for Christ. Um, there was a man who had stage four cancer. He was completely healed. There was a woman who uh, was suffering in her womb. Uh, she had been told that she could never, ever conceive, carry and deliver a child. And one year later, she had that little baby in her arms. Um, there was a lot of like just unusual and wonderful miracles that happened for people in those meetings. Um, and there that's was what signs are for, aren't really they, Joshua? Ministries to be launched. What's that? Aren't the, that's what signs are for, to bring yes. the unbelieving. I mean, just yes. chatting about and uh, talking about that because... People are like, oh, no, that's heresy. That's this and that. Look, it's happening. It's in the yeah. Bible, and God yes. uses it. Yes. He confirms his word with signs following always. And those signs that follow, so often we want to determine what kind of miracle God's going to bring, what <laughs> kind of supernatural thing he's going to do. But yeah. at the end of the day, he's God, and we've just got to be open to allow him to flow in the way that he desires to flow. And Oftentimes, I've discovered that when God begins to flow, it makes our flesh uncomfortable. Yep. It makes us feel uncomfortable, yep. um, but it has to be discerned by the Spirit. And if it's God, then we've got to allow God to work that thing out inside of us. Why are we uncomfortable? What kind of things have we struggled with? Whether it's, you know, maybe we're uncomfortable because it makes us embrace a revelation that we've, we've, uh, in the past resisted. Maybe it makes us uncomfortable because we're seeing God do something that we never knew he could do. Maybe it makes us feel uncomfortable because we were told in the past that God couldn't heal or God couldn't bring provision or God couldn't do certain things that now all of a sudden he's breaking through and showing us that it's possible. Yeah. So we need to allow God to work that out in us. I think it was Pastor Jack Deere uh, said that God will oftentimes offend our mind to reveal our heart. Wow. And we see that happening many times with signs and wonders where our wow. mind is totally offended, but God wow. wants to deal with those heart issues, those deep, deep heart issues that we've got. Wow. And Guys, you know, that wasn't good. like, you know, the, the sapphire came, then the oil came the next day and it was pouring out of Joshua's hands. And then when they brought him up to the podium, we have a picture here. Um, the oil began to come out of his feet. It did. They actually had to bring an altar cloth. There's the picture right there, Joshua. Talk about that moment. Oh, yeah. When the oil started flowing from my feet, I think it was Marcella actually grabbed a bunch of the altar cloths that they would normally cover the people with and yeah. begin to lay them down in the altar area for me to stand, stand on and step on. And I preached with my shoes off, standing on those cloths and the oil flowing. And at the end of the meeting, Again, Marcel and a, a group of others, they just began cutting up those cloths that, you know, normally they would use them, but they cut them up. And we ended up handing them out to people who were gathered in the meeting. And we've done this many times now. When the oil flows, we just grab those cloths and whether it's we put our oil-soaked hands on them or we step on them, but we just, you know, there's a transference, impartation in the anointing of God. And Acts 19 verses 11 and 12 speaks about handkerchiefs and aprons, um, that had touched the apostle Paul, that God took those as a point, again, a point of faith. And that's what we're talking about. The oil is the point of faith. Yeah. And, um, and God did extraordinary, wow. unusual miracles. Yes. And he's still working miracles today, Katie. Yeah. Yes, he is guys. It's not just for the apostles. It's for all of us. You yes. know, and I know, per I personally know Marcella. We like, she's one of my very close friends and she, touched it, smelled it, watched it seeping out into the altar cloths, cut them yes. up, passed them out, and miracles happened. It was amazing. Now, we're going to move into more teaching and ministry, but first, I want you to see this uh, promotion, this promo about Joshua's book, The Miracle of the Oil. This is a moment in 
history, really, that the anointing oil is going to the next level. But in order to go to that level in the oil, you need revelation about it. And Joshua's book has that revelation. So check this out. Receive new revelation about the supernatural realm. Enter fully into God's fresh anointing. Experience an outpouring of the Spirit's power. Learn how you can let the holy oil flow into your life. When you get a copy of Joshua Mills' new book, The Miracle of the Oil. Available everywhere books are sold and at joshuamills.com. You know, Joshua, this isn't just one of those books that, you know, oh, it's a good idea if you got it, you'll learn a couple things. This is a mm -hmm. movement now. Something has happened yes. in the spirit where the anointing oil is taking off and i mean even god's been telling me that and i've seen the results i'm not gonna from now on i'm not gonna walk around anywhere without a bottle of anointing oil in my pocket yes so people need to get this book let's put up the graphic right now just as a reminder if you didn't catch it when you watched that clip but uh you need to get the book you see it's available on amazon you can put up your phone right now on the screen while that graphic is up on the screen and you can capture that QR code right now, and you will have a, immediately a link will come down. It'll be so easy for you to get this. So just put your phone up, put your, your photo up, open on your phone, capture that QR code. The link will come, and you can go right to Amazon and buy that book. A lot of you already have your Amazon account set up. You can just put buy it. Buy it. Look, I'm telling you this, guys, as someone who has prophetically received the download from the Lord, like Joshua has to know that this is a part of what God, the technology that God has for us in this year, in 2023. That's why we're having Joshua on in the beginning of the year, because we want to get you started on the track that God has for you. And I'm telling you, Joshua, um, I see some stuff in the scriptures that's amazing about this. I, I don't want to keep repeating ourselves, but when I when I first read Exodus 30 about the 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 uh, the uh, all the ingredients about the sacred oil, and people will say, "Well, right. that says you're not supposed to repeat that." What it actually says, you're not supposed to use it as perfume, meaning you're not supposed to use it, make it, yes. and use it frivolously. Okay, yes. you're, it's holy anointing oil, and what I loved about it is. In that scripture, it says, use it to anoint the tent of my presence, the covenant box, the table and all its equipment, mm -hmm. the lampstand and all its equipment, the altar for burning incense, the altar for burning offerings, together with the equipment and the basin, dedicate these things in this way. And then it says this, and anything, now listen to this, guys, and anything or anyone that touches these things will be harmed by the power of its holiness. So you know what? I took that literally, Joshua. We're the temple of God. We have yes, all this equipment. We, we have all this equipment we in the are. temple. And I made yes. the oil, and I anointed myself, and I decreed I'm anointing every bit of equipment, the covenant box that's the Holy of Holies inside of me. I, I anoint the wash basin. I anoint my, yes. my organs, my, my bones, my, my, uh, my, my, my ligaments, my muscles. I anoint every part of my systems, everything. And if anything or anyone touches me, it will be harmed by the power of the oil's holiness. Katie, that is so good. I love that you captured that revelation because it's so true that God wants to anoint every part of who we are. And we really are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if the enemy tries to mess with what God has anointed, if, if sickness, disease, poverty tries to mess with what God has ordained and appointed for his purposes, then it's the enemy that gets harmed, not the people of God. And this, we need to rise up with this boldness, knowing that we were created for the oil. The oil belongs to us. The oil is our protection. The oil is our security. The oil is our provision. The oil brings our healing. The oil is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We are the anointed ones of God, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at guys. Matthew 25 talks about how the foolish versions didn't bring enough oil and their lamps went out. 
But the right. wise versions, what did they do? They took extra flasks along with them. They were prepared to anoint themselves, to anoint the, the bridegroom, to anoint anyone that needed the anointing. They had extra oil. We can't be foolish in this hour. We're getting to the time where Christ is going to come back again. And we've got to be yes. full of oil. The more we're anointing ourselves daily, anointing all the equipment in our temple, the more our temple is going to be restored, going to be rejuvenated. That myrrh oil that's in the anointing oil is going to going to push off death and corruption. We're going to get younger. We're going to get stronger, like Psalm 92 yes. says. I mean, this is a vital part of an end time army's equipment in the equipment belt of the end time army. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, there it's no mistake or it's not just like a random thing that the world is speaking about oil shortage right now, like mm. in the earth, we're seeing it in the news, we're seeing, seeing governments talk about it and everyone's, you know, getting anxious and afraid and, and worried about this oil shortage. The truth is in the realm of the Holy Spirit, there is no shortage. Ooh. In the realm of the Holy Spirit, Ooh. the anointing oil is what causes us to overcome. And for those who are connected with the oil of God, it's gonna overflow, not just, uh, not just stay in the spiritual realm, but it will flow in the spiritual realm, overflow into our emotions, our soul realm, and then in abundance begin to overtake the physical realm of our being. And we are going to be those in the days ahead that show forth the oil of God, that, wow. that walk in the oil. The oil is going to be our provision. The oil is going to be our healing. The oil is going to be our deliverance. Everything that we need is found in God. And we're going to see him becoming our provider in ways that we've never, ever seen before. And it's going to happen as we open up to allow his anointing to flow in and through our lives. I love that um, you read that passage of scripture in Exodus 30, where they're taking the oil and they're anointing things, things that are used for the worship of God. Wow. We have taken the oil. We've anointed guitars and pianos. We've anointed those natural instruments. But we've also taken the oil and anointed homes. We anoint our home. We anoint the doorposts of our home. We anoint the windows of our home. Yes. That represents portals. And our home is dedicated and set aside for God's glory, that God would be glorified in our home, through our family. Anoint your kids. An anoint their school books. Anoint your wallet. Anoint your money. Uh, you know, when you purpose to take these things and say, God, I consecrate and dedicate these things for your use. It's amazing how God will begin to lead us and guide us in ways that we've not uh, been instructed before because now we're giving him permission to do it. And I think even, you know, anointing our finances is a huge thing because uh, some people have financial issues, not because God isn't provider, but because they're not stewarding their finances in the way that God has desired. And when we anoint our finances and say, God, these finances belong to you. Wow. We're now not only giving permission for God to use our finances, but we're giving him permission to instruct us on how we need to organize our finances, utilize our finances. And that makes all the difference. The anointing of God makes all the difference. And really the anointing positions us to enter into a greater glory. Yeah, it's so, okay, look guys, uh, just a short story and a little testimony here. Uh, uh, you know, it says, uh, it says in Psalm 23, right? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My brimming cup runneth over. Well, you saw the yes. cups running over with oil that Joshua, when he got, when the oil began to pour out on him. But God begins to anoint you, what? In the presence of your enemies. You know, mm -hmm. Joshua, when I took possession of this, Property I am, I have now in Naples where Dog the Bounty Hunter and his wife and I, we all reside and we're building these anti-sex trafficking homes. Um, right. I, I had an encounter. I was in the house already um, and I was asleep and at four o'clock in the morning, I have a vision that I'm walking into, I pull my car into the driveway and I pull into the garage. I go to put my hand on the door to open it and I hear a voice saying, this house doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. Oh, wow. Yeah. There was a spirit that had laid claim to the house. And we even had, when we first moved in on our screen of our front door, somebody had spray painted a demonic face. 
to curse wow. us. So when I put my hand there, it said, and I started to open the door, it said to me, this isn't your house. This house belongs to me. And I said, oh, you got things twisted, right? And I yeah. woke up, and the Lord says, quickly, go to the kitchen, pour, anoint and slather your hands with oil, and go wow. around the entire house now, because I, by the presence of my spirit, through the anointing oil, will drive that spirit out. And that's yes. what happened. So four o'clock in the morning, my awesome. hands are slathered with oil and I am anointing everything, the, the doorknobs, the, the posts, the windows, everything in the entire house. And the Lord yes. cleared that spirit out. I've not had any trouble with it since. Yeah, that's amazing. This is, this is real. One of the things that the oil does is it mar it marks things, right? Like you can tell where oil has been. Like even when you think of like your car leaking oil in the driveway, you pull out the yeah. driveway, you can see oil, right? Oil leaves a mark. And in the realm of the spirit, when the anointing oil is released in a situation, in a location like your home, like you're talking about, it's leaving the mark that says this place has been marked for God's purposes. This place is set aside as holy. The enemy has no permission uh, to trespass in this place. It's off limits for the enemy to do any damage. This place belongs to Jesus. And I think that is so powerful wow. what God had you do because immediately he had you take that authority that you knew was yours because you're a believer. Mm. And with the oil, you marked your territory and now it's it's crying out saying this belong this belongs to God. This Come God. on. Come on. Yeah. Now Joshua, you know, I want to teach just a little bit more with you. I have you release. Um, sure. and then we're gonna minister. Um and what I want to talk about is how worship will cause even more oil to flow, even supernaturally, like it has for you, out of oh, your yeah. hands and your feet and everything else. Yeah. You know, it, it talks about in Luke 7, the woman with the alabaster box. And Jesus says, you did not anoint my head. Uh, you, he's talking to the people around that are scorning her. He says, you didn't anoint my head. You anointed my head with cheap, ordinary oil, but she has anointed my feet with costly, rare perfume. Wow. She got down, you know, and bowed before him, kissing his feet, anointing yes. his feet, wiping them with her hair. She poured out her adoration and her worship. And Jesus, we know her story today because of mm -hmm. her complete surrender in worship to the Lord. And it was connected to her breaking her oil forth, the oil inside of her and the oil in the yeah. natural that she had that was worth so much yeah. and pouring it out on him. Do you believe and do you agree that our adoration and worship is going to cause even more supernatural signs of the oil flowing in our lives, supernatural miracles happening when we anoint people with oil. What say you on that? Absolutely, because we have been anointed to worship God. That, that's the anointing that we carry as believers. We are instructed by the, the scriptures. It says that those who worship in spirit and in truth are the ones that the Father is seeking, the ones that he's coming after. As believers, we've been anointed for worship, for praise. We've been anointed to pour out in adoration before the Lord. And as we take that anointing that he's given us for worship and we begin to pour it out, it is like a sweet perfume. The Bible calls it a heavenly incense that rises up mm. to the throne of God. And there is so much beauty in that. Now, I know that as we have personally worshiped at all different times, that is the moment when suddenly you begin to engage with heaven yeah. because you're yielding yourself in such a way, a posture that says, I'm humbling myself, God, that you might be seen. And when God is seen and when God begins to fill his temple yeah. and when God begins to make himself known in the earth, there's great glory that's poured out. And, you know, it's a whole principle of the seed. What a person sows, that shall they also reap. When you sow the oil of worship, there's a greater outpouring of oil that comes upon you. Mm. And, um, you know, you were talking about Joan Hunter earlier. Many times when the oil begins to flow, we smell the fragrance of Jesus in our midst. And wow. sometimes we come like the new wine smell like Patricia was talking about. Many times it comes like the cedars of Lebanon smell. You read about wow. it in Psalm 92. 
Yeah. It's also mentioned in Psalm 104, I think it's verse 16, talks about the fragrance of the cedars of Lebanon. It's wow. a fragrance of strength and um, power. I remember being in a meeting up in Saskatoon, Canada, and the oil flowing from my hands and it coming with that cedars of Lebanon smell. And Joan Hunter was standing beside me in that moment. And I said, Joan, the oil is flowing again. And it, has, it smells like cedars. And she said, oh, that's sap, that's sap that's coming. And I mean, she, without even skipping a beat, she just said, that's sap. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. I never thought of that. Like wow. us being the trees of the Lord and the sap, the holy sap coming out, the holy oil sap of God. And I said, but what does it mean? And again, without skipping a beat, you know, Joan, she said that supernatural anointing prosperity. Wow. It's like God had given her the whole acronym for it. Wow. Yeah, supernatural anointing prosperity. Wow. She said, that's flowing out of you. Well, that became the message that God was bringing us for that meeting. Wow. And, you know, oftentimes God will, as we pursue him and as we worship him and as we give ourselves to him, he comes and he pours out upon us and he gives us the message that we need for the day. He brings us the provision, the strength, the boldness, the the courage. He he brings us a fresh anointing, the ability to do and function however it is that he's called us, but it's all right there in the anointing. Wow. And all we have to do is simply lean into it, oh. yield to Whew. it, and allow God to flow. Man, that's so simple. And look, the sap thing is true, guys. It's in the scripture. We, we, we touched on this earlier in Psalm 92. It says, my horn, that's where you carry oil in, is the horn. Yeah. My emblem of excessive strength and straight, stately grace, you have exalted like that of a wild ox, very extremely powerful animal. I am anointing with fresh oil. Then it goes down a few scriptures, and it goes like this, that they'll be long-lived, upright, stately, fruitful, useful. It's talking about strength and vitality and vigor, energy, youthfulness, returning to the days of your youth. And then it says this, verse 14, growing in grace, God's people shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be full of sap, <laughs> of spiritual yes. vitality and rich in the verdure of trust, love, and contentment. We will be full of sap, the oil, oh, the powerful <laughs> presence of the oil of the anointing. And I love how you just said it really hit me. And then we're going to go into some ministry after we look at this little clip here. Yeah. But it really hit me how you said you just have to lean into it and believe. It isn't works. It's just faith. Right. It's faith to utilize Absolutely. the oil, partake of it, to anoint yourself regularly with it. You know, we're supposed to, it says that you anoint our head with the oil of gladness, that the yeah. oil as we anoint will be bringing gladness upon our lives. Wow. Amen. It's so, it's so true. Guys, we're going to go into ministry, but first I want you to watch this clip again about Joshua's powerful book. You have to get it. It's the miracle of the oil. Receive new revelation about the supernatural realm. Enter fully into God's fresh anointing. Experience an outpouring of the Spirit's power. Learn how you can let the holy oil flow into your life. When you get a copy of Joshua Mills' new book, The Miracle of the Oil. Available everywhere books are sold and at joshuamills.com. One of the coolest things about being a host of the show is I get all the books. <laughs> Yes, thank <laughs> yeah. you. So grateful. And I got Joshua's book too, and I love it. I love it. And it's so powerful. And it's for now, guys. It's for 2023, the oil, the authority of the presence of the anointing oil, with you just being faithful to believe it, to get the revelation of it, and then to utilize it is going to bring you up so many notches. This is not the old school anoint with oil gig anymore. I'm telling you, there's a new fresh breath on it. You got to get yes. the book. Look at this graphic right here. Put your phone up, take it out, take a photo. The photo will capture that QR code. You'll be sent a link just like that of Amazon. Push buy it. A lot of you have Amazon already. Come on, you know you do. Get this because it's needful in this hour. Joshua, we only have four minutes left. Can we start ministering to people? Because they've went and they've got their oil. Oh, yes. And they're ready for it. Amen. Well, there is a fresh oil that God is releasing. And, you know, something that's so fun, Katie, is that we've had so many testimonies come in that as people have begun reading that book, 
that they've gotten manifestations in their own hands yes. of oil beginning to flow and pour and, you, and come. But I believe that there is no limit to how God can do that. And even right now, as you're watching this program, I believe that there is a fresh anointing that's coming upon you. Mm -hmm. Some of you are beginning to sense, feel just the heat of God just flowing from the top of your head all the way down throughout your body. Some of you are beginning to feel tingles on the inside. Just allow the oil to flow. There's healing oil that is being given to you right now to meet every need where there's been sickness and there's been pain, there's been discomfort and disease. Right now, the miracle oil of God flows into you and brings healing. Just receive it, receive it, receive it right now in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, Meaning, and I, I even saw yeah. a, the oil of joy, the oil of gladness begin to pour out on people. You mentioned oh. it just a few moments ago, but I saw people be, being hilariously filled Come with on. the oil of God and breaking out in spontaneous oh laughter, even in their homes, as they're watching this feeling, Jesus. just that bubbling up with the Holy Ghost on the inside, receive that and allow all depression, oh all anxiety, all worry Jesus. to leave. As the joy of the Lord becomes your supernatural strength. Ooh, geez, that's what we need in this hour, guys. We're all so serious and so oppressed and so angry and bitter. Let's get full of the oil of joy. Get your yes. anointing oil together, guys. Now, I decree for you that as you anoint all the equipment in your temple and all the things in your home and your, in your mm -hmm. business and everything else, that as you anoint it with the power of the holy oil, that nothing, no one or anything that touches you, those things will be harmed. Nothing will be able to harm you. That oil will release the holy power and presence of the Holy Spirit of Jesus and of God himself and anything or anyone that tries to touch you, disease, disorders, sickness, demonic powers, any type of calamity, anything, those things will be harmed. Those things will be cursed. Those things will be taken out and removed from your life. I decree it over you right now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. We have like a minute 20 left. Um, Joshua, I'm going to put up the graphic again of your book. This is so powerful. I know it's for now. Just tell them really quickly, you only got a minute left, what they're going to get in the book. Well, listen, as you read the book, you're going to get revelation about what the anointing is, the benefits of moving in the anointing, and how you can cooperate with God in his anointing and allow his oil to flow into your life and through your life to touch those around you. Um, I share a lot of testimonies that are going to be faith building, but also activations that will get you moving in the spirit and cooperating with the miracle of the oil, and you will see those miracles happening in your own life. Yeah, and you know what I noticed too, my friend, um, that you've even you're getting even more and more successful and prosperous. You already were, but I see even more favor on you since you've written this book, and since right. you've been um, preaching this message. I see even an expansion happening in your life. I believe it's going to happen for all of you too, guys. Get that book. Go to Amazon.com. Get the QR code and get it. We've got 15 seconds left. Joshua Mills. I love you, my friend. Oh, I love you too. Thank you so much for having me on your program. It's so good, guys. Isn't it amazing? And no more Christmas decorations. This is the end. We'll see you next week.